Welcome into this Sweet 16 preview as today I'm going to be breaking down the Midwest semifinal number one between number one Purdue Boilermakers and the number five seed Gonzaga Bulldogs. Before I get into the breakdown, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video if you enjoy this content. Give us a comment and let us know who you like in this Sweet 16 matchup. But enough of that, let's get into the, to this matchup. This game will be taking place at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. Purdue sits a five and a half point favorite, up one point from Open, which opened Purdue four and a half. The total sits at one fifty four and a half. Purdue comes into the game thirty one and four, winners of the Big Ten regular season. Gonzaga twenty seven and seven, second place in the West Coast Conference and second place in the conference tournament behind ousted number five seed St. Mary's. Um, when looking at this. Matchup. Purdue's path to get here. They took on number 16 seed Grambling State and exercised some demons, getting a 28 point victory and the cover over Grambling. Then went on to defeat number eight Utah State 106 67 in absolute dominating fashion. Gonzaga's path, a little bit more difficult. Faced McNeese State, a 31 team in the first round. Absolutely dominated them despite seeing McNeese as a very trendy upset underdog in the first round. Then they went on to defeat number four, Kansas, 89-68, a game they trailed by one at halftime, got the cover in that one despite seeing professional money on the Jayhawks. Obviously, Kansas, not the same team they were early in the year, didn't have McCullers in that one. Dickinson and Harris both banged up. Still a nice win for the Zags to get to the Sweet 16. Mark Few's been phenomenal uh, consistently getting to the Sweet 16 every single year including this one, a year that the Gonzaga Bulldogs were really on the bubble until mid-February. We didn't know, maybe early February, we didn't know if the Zags were going to make the tournament. They get in, end up being a, a pretty decent seed. Um, they did play earlier this season, uh, Purdue and Gonzaga did. Purdue won it 73-63. We saw almost an exact same line. That that line closed 5.5, 153.5. We're setting 5.5, 154.5. So almost the exact same line. But these two teams have changed quite a bit since that early matchup. One thing I will mention from that game, I don't want to talk too much about it. It's not all that relevant considering how early in the year it was in the Maui Invitational. But Graham E.K. finished with four fouls in that game. Zach Eady had zero. That is something to keep an eye on in this matchup. Looking at the matchup itself, Purdue comes into this game 8-1 and one on a neutral floor this season. That one loss was in the Big Ten semifinal, which was a one-point overtime loss to Wisconsin Badgers. It was the third meeting of the two teams that year. Wisconsin lost both of the first two to Purdue, so... Tough to beat a team three times. That's their lone loss on a neutral floor this year. They won the Maui Invitational early in the year. As we talked about, beat Gonzaga, beat Tennessee, beat Marquette. You know, Purdue, as much as everybody wants to talk about fading them, and I'm, I've am i been a big Purdue hater more than anyone else after last year and what I've seen the last three seasons, but they've been really, really good this year. It's like they're on a mission, at least in the regular season, and they've not shown anything different so far in the postseason. They beat 11 tournament teams in the regular season. And if you include uh, the tournament, right, 13, right? They won their first two tournament games, plus 11 in the regular season. They've beaten six of the remaining 15 other teams in the tournament. That's amazing. No other team is close to that. They beat Illinois twice, Gonzaga, Tennessee, Marquette, Alabama, and Arizona. All of those teams are five seeds or higher as well. So it's not like they're beating teams that are on a Cinderella run here, right? All the chalk is in the Sweet 16. They've beaten six of those teams. And, you know, it's been an impressive year for Purdue. All their losses have come either on the, they came on the road in the regular season and then won in that neutral game against Wisconsin, which was the third time those teams met. They have not gotten beat by double digits. I'm sorry, they've been beat by double digits one time all year. One time, that's a good sign of a dominant team. And, you know, looking at this specific matchup, I think the, the most important thing to talk about is the E.D. Graham E.K. matchup, right? So everything for Purdue runs through Zach E.D. We know that. Everything for Gonzaga runs through Graham E.K. If you're not familiar with Gonzaga, he's their big man. And the reason I think that this game I'm going to look to Purdue and why I think Purdue is going to win the game has to do with this matchup. And that's the fact that Graham E.K. is not a jump shooter, right? He has a little bit of a mid-range game, but he's mostly inside the arc, uh, inside the paint, rather. 
and he's not going to stretch Zach Eady away from the basket, which is where Purdue can get vulnerable defensively. If Eady can stay at the rim, it's really difficult for teams to score in the paint, and and Gonzaga is no different, right? Um, They are heavily, heavily reliant on two-point field goals. In fact, they're the 11th highest production team in terms of two-point field goal percentage. 58.5% of their production comes from twos. A lot of that comes at the rim. If you can't draw Edie away from the rim, I think Gonzaga is going to have trouble scoring consistently in a way that they're accustomed to. That's a problem for the Zags here in this spot. I wonder if Mark Few will consider playing some other lineups with Graham E.K. on the bench. If you're thinking about it from a defensive perspective, Gonzaga has only one guy, and that's Graham E.K., who can possibly have a chance to guard Edie in the post one-on-one. If you're going to double anyway, it might be smart to consider going to some different lineups and not playing E.K. the full 35 minutes that he normally plays because if you play Greg or Huff at the five and E.K. on the bench, now you have the ability to stretch the floor and draw Edie away from the basket, which allows more lanes to drive for Nimhart, for Watson, you know, for Hickman. And so I'm interested to see what Mark Few will do here. The problem is everything offensively runs through Graham E.K. for the Zags. And so it's hard for me to imagine Mark Few, and I don't think Few, I think Few's a really good coach. I just, I don't think he's a guy who's going to play to a matchup that much. I don't think he's going to just like decide, you know what, let's try not playing E.K. for 10 minutes and see what what it's like. I I think he's going to play his style. But again, if you're going to double from a defensive perspective, it would make sense because if you're going to double, it doesn't really matter who's guarding Edie in a one-on-one. I think the best way Gonzaga could defend Purdue would be to make it really hard on Edie to catch the ball, force Purdue to make swung around the arc threes, where they're not getting inside-out looks. That's, in my opinion, the best way Gonzaga could have success in this game defensively. And if you can do that, and offensively you can find ways to string Edie away from the basket every few possessions, or maybe find a way to get him in foul trouble, which doesn't tend to happen very often, that's the path for Gonzaga I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to play Graham E.K. the whole game as much as they can. If he gets in foul trouble, maybe they're forced to go to that. But again, can they score without things running through E.K.? He's so important to them on the offensive end, and this is just a terrible matchup for him. I don't know how he's going to score 15 or more points in this game against E.D. He's just too big, and that's the problem with Zach E.D. He's just absolutely massive. And um, the other couple things I want to mention— When Purdue tends to get upset, two things tend to happen. Number one, their guards turn the ball over. And number two, they don't shoot the ball well from three. So that's kind of the recipe for upsetting Purdue. Force their guards to turn the ball over and force them to shoot a low percentage from three. I almost think both things have to happen for this Purdue team to lose from what I've seen so far. Unless they just get totally nervous and Matt Painter just throws up all over himself, which is very possible. Um, but the problem is Gonzaga is 246 in the country in turnover percentage, and they're 171st in the country in three-point field goal percentage defense, allowing the 79th most production from threes defensively. So they don't do a good job guarding the three-point line, and they do a terrible job turning you over. And that's the two ways you really beat Purdue and upset them. So it's just not a good matchup for Gonzaga. I know they've been really good in the tournament, and and I've seen them play well, but you look at their their overall body of work again, right? They're 2-5 and five against the top 20 in the Ken Palm this year. They lost to St. Mary's twice, Purdue, San Diego State, UConn. Three of those losses were by double digits. Four of them were by nine or more. They beat St. Mary's once, and they beat UK, uh, Kentucky, in Rupp Arena. Those are their only two, like, really solid wins all year. St. Mary's is out of the tournament in the first round. Kentucky's out of the tournament in the first round. So that should tell you something, right? Purdue has beaten six of the remaining 15 teams. Gonzaga has not beaten a single one. So 
everything points Purdue in this game. And I think that's why we've seen professional money on Purdue, despite the fact that they have struggled in these types of spots in the Sweet 16, right? Lost to St. Peter's a couple years ago. You know, lost last year in the round of, the, round of 64 to the 16 seed. Everybody knows that, FDU. But we've seen pro money on Purdue in this spot, and we've seen pro money against the Zags last week. Even though Kansas did not have a shot at covering in that second half, we saw that line go from four and a half and close at a soft three and a half, even three in some spots. So I think professional betters are going to continue to stay on Purdue here. I don't know that there's a ton of value here at five and a half. I got this at four and a half when it opened. I think I would still lean Purdue at five and a half. So if I had to make a best bet here, I would say Purdue minus five and a half. You, could I make a case for Purdue in the first half? Probably. But some of these closer games, they've not dominated in the first half the way they have in recent past. But, I, you know, this is going to be a very, very fascinating matchup. I, I think Purdue is going to take care of business. I think they're on a mission this year. I see the Boilermakers going to the Final Four. I don't think Tennessee or Creighton can beat them. Although, apparently, I've heard rumblings that whoever wins that Creighton-Tennessee game is going to take professional money against Purdue, especially if it opens, you know, closer to Purdue minus three. But overall, I like Purdue in this matchup. It's essentially a home game, right? It's it's not super close, but it's four hours roughly from Purdue, from Indianapolis, right? And it's a flight, a long flight from Spokane. So you're going to have the fan advantage. You have the matchup advantage. You're the better team all year. I like Purdue in this spot. They've covered numbers bigger than this against better teams all year long. I don't think that's going to change here. I think winning against... The last two weeks when they were, you know, big, big favorites, that was, I was maybe more worried with in those two spots that they really struggle and they didn't. So give me the Boilermakers in this one. I would take them up to minus five and a half. I'll maybe minus six at the very most. You're just, you're just taking a bad number at that point. So try to find a better number. I think the public might come in here on Gonzaga late, but we'll see. If you like this breakdown, like I said, like this video, give us a thumbs up, comment, tell us you like in this matchup. And uh, I'll be back with some more Sweet 16 breakdowns. Check out all the videos as I'm doing all eight games here. Enjoy the Sweet 16. Thanks for tuning in.